Now, when you're working with variables or with other expressions in Transact SQL, you're very often going to need to convert them from one data type to another data type. Transact SQL is unforgiving about data types in many situations, and it provides you with a couple of functions, cast and convert, that can be used to change data types. Transact SQL is what's called a strongly typed language, unlike other programming languages that you may have worked with. Here's an example that'll make this clear. Here I'm going to declare a variable called at message. It's a varchar20 variable. I'm going to assign a value using select at message is the name of the variable and what I'm going to assign to it is the combination of this literal string, the result is, and this expression, 2 plus 2. Now this expression, 2 plus 2, is going to give me back a numeric data type. And so what we're trying to do here is to concatenate together a character data type with a numeric data type and to store it into a character variable. This is the kind of thing that's going to cause a problem. Now, this third line, print at message, that is another example, that print statement, of something that's only used here in the query analyzer. It's not really part of Transact SQL. You'll see what it looks like when we get this to succeed, and then I'll show you the alternative to print that you would use if you were creating a query that needed to run outside of the context of the query analyzer. So first, let's just try this. I get back an error message, and the error message is telling me that there's a syntax error converting the varchar value the result is to a column of data type int. So what SQL Server has tried to do here in this case is to somehow add this value to this value. It got confused about what was going on. There are a couple of ways I can fix this, but the best way is going to be to explicitly convert my 2 plus 2 numeric value into a varchar value because what I want to end up with is assigning it to this at message variable which was declared as a varchar variable. Okay, does that make sense? So now when I highlight this entire set of statements, I can execute it and it'll give me back the result is 4. It performed the math on 2 plus 2. It then converted that numeric result into a varchar and was successfully able to concatenate it to the text value here and store it in the variable that we created. Now, I told you I'd show you an alternative to using print. Print, you notice, doesn't give me any kind of a result set down here. There's no grid or anything showing. It just prints. It just displays here in the messages area. The grid area is still blank, right? This was in the messages area. If I wanted to actually return this value as a result set, then instead of print, I could simply use select. And now I'd be using select in the conventional sense of the word to return a value. In other words, I'm not assigning a value with this select statement the way I was assigning a value here. If I run this, Instead of giving me the result in the message pane, the message pane is just telling me one row is affected, and my result is coming back here in the grid pane as a normal result set that you get back from any select statement. So select statements do not have to draw upon information in tables. You can just create information on the fly and return it as the result set from a select statement. Here's an example where instead of using cast, we're using convert. Let's take a peek back at that cast syntax so that you can see the difference. When you use cast, you then have an open parenthesis. Whatever your expression is comes first, and then the keyword as, and then the data type that you want to cast that. So we're casting this expression as a varchar. When you use convert, it works a little differently. After convert, you have the open parenthesis, and then the data type that you want to convert to, and then after that, 
the expression. So it's in exactly the opposite order, the arguments that we're passing in to this function. Var char and 2 plus 2 are the same, but they're in the opposite order. With convert, the data type comes first. And this will work to give us exactly the same result. Now, you may be wondering, why bother with convert if there's cast? Well, convert actually extends the functionality of cast because in addition to the two arguments that cast includes, the data type and the expression that we need to convert, there is an optional third argument called style. And here's an example of converting with style, meaning that we're using this third argument, the style argument. And there's just a bunch of numbers that you pass in as style. You can look them up in books online. If you just check for the syntax for convert, you'll see a whole list of these. Here's just a few that I'll show you. First, I'm going to simply select get date. Get date is a built-in function that returns the current date and time. This, by the way, is an example of something called a niladic function. Niladic, N-I-L-A-D-I-C. Niladic is just a fancy word for saying that this is a function with no parameters. You don't pass anything into get date. It just gives you back an answer. In this case, it gives us back the current date and time. And what we're looking at is the default formatting for the current date and time that Transact SQL is going to use unless you specify another format. So in this case, it's going to give us back year, dash, month, dash, day, and then the time in hours, minutes, and milliseconds. Uh, seconds, and then, you know, point milliseconds, all right? 27 thousandths of a second. If I don't like that format, here's where I can use that extra style argument of convert. In this case, I'm going to convert the date into a varchar format, a text format, and let's look at the format that it gives us. A two-digit year and a simple standard short date format. If I don't want that two-digit year, all I need to do is change the style argument, and now I'll get back a four-digit year. And there are a number of choices here. I could choose, let's try 102 instead of 101. And you'll see what that looks like. Be sure I select the entire line. 102 uses dots. It starts year, dot, month, dot, day. Some developers like that quite a bit. And there's a whole range of choices. I could try 112 and see what I get. And again, you can look these up. That left out the dots. Okay. Another way that you can convert, if you are converting to a string or text data type, is using this str. str converts to a string, and it allows you to do some rounding of numbers. So let's take a look at what's happening here. I'm going to select the price from our product table of all the products, and then I'm going to select the value that I get back from running this built-in function, str, feeding it price, whatever is on each row, the value from the price field. I'm going to tell it that I want the total length of that return value to be six characters. And the one is a way for me to specify the number of digits after the decimal point that I want to round to. So when I run this, I get back the actual price was 35.78, but I'm rounding it here to just one digit after the decimal point, so it rounded it to 35.8, okay? That's because of the one in this third argument of str. So this is specifically used for converting numeric values into text values and in the same process doing some rounding as part of the formatting.